So we're here at Grossman after hours. Everyone's gone home. We're going to come and see what young Mr. Sizio is up to. So let's see. We're here at C008. And um, mm. what are you up to, Sizio? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, just looking at my maps as I often do in the afternoon. We've been asked quite a bit about the your classroom. What's oh, okay. in your classroom? So would you like to show the GS squad around? Yeah, like, as in show, show some of my many maps. Do you have maps? I have so many maps. Excellent. Show us the maps. Okay, well, first one is a round map. It's actually a sphere. It's a world... Globe. Special like, name for that? Uh, kind of map? Globe. Yeah. Mm. Well done. Yeah. I like to, you know, just throw it around. The kids falling asleep, just like nail them. Yeah. Um, yeah, Useful. it's good. I right, so bought it at Questicon, 20 bucks. Good, good 20 bucks. <laughs> Another world map, quite a political map again. Um, haven't got South Sudan on there, I've yet to update a map um, of that, but I've got some uh, you know, Scotland up there, a little bit of Russia. I've got all these as part of my, uh, in all the Nat Geo magazines I collected over many, many years. Self-portrait uh, too, I see underneath. Yeah, no, that was, uh, was that drawn, by, drawn by a student, and the uh, same student did the bumblebee picture for me as a present. I very much appreciate it. Someone draws me pictures, I'll put them on the wall. Uh, Leighton Quarry, close to home. I uh, like to have Great yeah, Township of Swansea. many different scales here. Yeah, we've got, um, I believe, Murray's Beach Where's is down Where's my home? Yeah, oh, look, somewhere. It's not even there yet. Because uh, it's, it's like here, here in the middle yeah. of nowhere. Mm. Very good. It's the world's largest salt lake, as far as I'm aware. Um, so, uh, Pacific. We've got the Pacific here. Uh, obviously, showing Australia's location in the Pacific. One of my favourite things about my Pacific map is you'll see, I've got Hawaii. Hawaii's right here, isolated in the middle of the Pacific. But... This map shows the sea floor, the elevations of the sea floor. Now, you notice Hawaii is here, but if you follow sort of up, or let's say northwest, you'll see this ridge, and then it actually gets to here, and it turns a corner and goes almost directly north of there. This weird sort of L shape. That's actually the sea floor. There's a hot spot in the mantle underneath where Hawaii is, and as the tectonic plate has slid across the hot spot underneath, it's left this giant ridge, and you can see the sort of 250 million years of time as the as the t continental plate or the, the oceanic plate has drifted across that hot spot. Very good. Um, United States political map, all the cities and towns of the United States. So Everest here, um, one of my favourites because it actually shows the climbing route. So you go across the ice flow there and up the side here and along this ridge. It actually shows how you, how you get to the top of Mount Everest, which is something you might try to do and hopefully not die in the process. Uh, yeah, oldie world map, same as the other world map. I just Think that, thought it looked uh, nice and. How old is this map? Uh, that is many, many years old. That is from 2018. Oh, I know. Gosh. Another time. Uh, a few certificates from past students up the top there. Shout out to uh, Mr. Jordan Tin, Miss, Miss Heidi Burgess. She'll be very, very happy with that. Um, uh, East and West Coast of the United States. East Coast down the bottom, West Coast up the top. Again, political maps showing you that. Uh, Ireland and Northern Ireland down the top there. That's. Uh, uh, you know, political strife there, maybe coming with Brexit and whatnot. Uh, upside down world map. I love that one because it's you've got to remember the Earth is a floating ball in space, as I just threw. Um, so there's really no up or down. The fact that Europe is at the top and Australia is at the bottom is just an artifact that the Europeans were the ones that invented maps to put themselves at the top. There is no up and down in space. Uh, I love this one too. This is my map of the Hunter Valley. That is an elevation map. Yeah, it's actually vertically exaggerated, but it's hard, sort of plasticky. Cardboard, and you can see where all the hills and valleys are around the Hunter Valley. So we've got Newcastle down here and Singleton. So we're right here now in East Maitland, and you can see the whole Hunter Valley in there up to Musselbrook and Singleton. And this one? Winter is coming. Moving on. Uh, geographical map of the United States more mountains, valleys, rivers, Grand Canyon, all that sort of fun stuff. Good to, good to demonstrate the difference between a political map and a geographical map to the students. Uh, geographical map here of Southeast Asia, most of the, all the Southeast, Southeast Asian countries down the bottom here. You can see right up to the Himalayas. No, um, no Tibet though. Sad. Sorry. Talk to China about that. Um, we've then got Canada. Great. It's like polite Americans. They love Canadians. Um, so yeah, Canada, you can see almost everyone in Canada, more people live below this line than above it. In Australia, everyone's on the east coast and no one's in the middle. Same with Canada, this whole part here, pretty much uninhabited, almost no one there. Um, Again, what? Imperials, Imperials for life. 
And moving on again. This is a very historical map here. Those of you watching in the distant future, we used to have what we called the Arctic. And it used to be like, all oh, this water used to be frozen. We used to have like an ice cap. I know this is gonna blow you away by like 2030, but it used to be all frozen. That used to not be open ocean. So Northern, North Pole there, right? North Pole's right in the middle. Hopefully Santa's found a new home by the time you're watching this. Uh, flags of the world. A few of them are outdated, but mostly, mostly fine. Um, zooming in here on, uh, on Europe, I like, like you know, a lot of European discussion. Um, plus we've got a, had a few exchange students from time to time. Um, uh, so it's good to see where they come from there. Um, world map again, I like this is my, like my first, fourth world map of the room, but it's good to have as many world maps as you can so the students can see. Still no South Sudan, they're not always up to date. Um, obviously not our home, we finish. And Australia, now one of my favorite things about this Australian world map, or not world map, but Australian map, is that they could have made it just slightly bigger, but they didn't. So what they had to do was cut Tasmania and put it in its own little box in the, in the Great Australian Bight, rather than just going well, put it where it is. Um, but yeah, we've got the jail wall at the back. There's really one last thing that everyone asks about when coming to this room. Mm -hmm. One thing that's maybe even more noticeable than all of your maps, and it'd be kind of cool if you could tell us a story. Oh. Zooming out now, you can see the huge amount of National Geographics. So what's that all about, Sizio? Well, my granddad used to be the essentially the geography teacher teacher at the uni. He was the person that trained a lot of geography teachers over the years. Part of his job was knowing and keeping up to date with geographical happenings. So he collected every single Nat Geo magazine from 1968 through to 2014. Um, when he passed away, um, he, um, we found they were all still in pretty good shape in a box. And my Nan asked me if I'd like to have them. I said, yeah, definitely. So rather than just keeping them in a box to gather dust and maybe not get used, I decided to make it a bit of a bit of wall art, a bit of a mural, a bit of a yeah, nice thing to see. So with the help of 2018 Year 7, and shout out to those guys, uh, we put them, we, we cut the covers off and we put them all together. I've got uh, human, built environment, human geography on the left hand side. So basically all the covers that relate to human geography in some way, people, farms, cities, technology, all that sort of stuff. And then on the right hand side, we've got physical geography, we've got the natural world. Got a panda, got a monkey carrying a snowball. What's up with that? Um, bit of dinosaur, bit of lion, he's just having a snack on a zebra, that's cool. Um, but yeah, natural world over here. And uh, I don't know, hopefully it brightens up the, the room and people ask some questions about different things that are on, on the pictures and get a feel for what's happening in the world around them. So, as I always say, Geo is life. Thanks for having us in your classroom, Sizio. Anytime. have a northern ice cap. They used to be, we called it Antarctica. No, we called it the Arctic. Stop that because I'm going <laughs> to...